During World War I, Marie Curie invented something that saved millions of lives, but almost no one remembers it. Most people know her as the Nobel Prize winning scientist who helped pioneer research into radioactivity. But what she did during the First World War was something else entirely. She designed, built and operated the first portable x-ray machines. She took science out of the lab and straight to the front line, helping the wounded and saving lives. Her invention changed the course of modern medicine and was vital to winning the First World War. And in this video, we're going to learn exactly how she did it. This story starts in July 1914, at the start of the First World War. Marie Curie, the world famous Polish scientist, was determined to help. She was living in France, setting up a new radio institute in Paris. She could have stayed in her lab during the war, continuing her groundbreaking research, but she chose a different path, one guided by her belief that science should serve humanity. Marie envisioned a radiological car fitted with a small x-ray machine, a dark room for developing photographic plates, and a small dynamo generator to power it all. With characteristic ingenuity, she designed all of this, and then took her plans to the French military. But they hesitated. Unsure if her plan was feasible, they kept delaying funding. So, Curie, determined to turn her idea into reality, approached the Union of French Women and the Red Cross, who helped fund and support the creation of the first radiological car. It was a success and quickly showed its value in treating soldiers on the front line. To scale up the operation, more vehicles were needed. So Marie, who was famous for her scientific achievements, used her influence and social connections to ask wealthy friends to donate their cars for the war effort. We have to remember in 1914, Owning a car was rare and expensive. Donating one to the front line was no small gesture. But her persistence paid off. By October 1914, she had secured 20 vehicles to be converted. She persuaded manufacturers to donate smaller x-ray machines and generators and enlisted local mechanics to volunteer their time converting the vehicles into fully functional radiological cars. Next came the question, who would operate these machines? Radiologists were highly sought after and already overwhelmed with work in major hospitals. So, Marie came up with a solution. She would train volunteers herself. With most of the men off fighting, she recruited 20 women for the first training course. Her 17-year-old daughter, Irene, helped her, and together they created a rigorous curriculum covering everything an x-ray operator would need to succeed going into depth about the physics of electricity and x-rays, photographic processing and human anatomy. By the end of the war, over 150 women had been trained by Marie and her daughter. The radiological cars were then sent to the front lines. Each one carried a doctor, a driver and a technical assistant trained by Marie. All were civilians and all determined to help treat the wounded. French soldiers began calling the cars Pertite Curies, which translates to Little Curies in English. Over the course of the war, it's estimated that more than a million radiographic examinations were performed in these radiological cars. Marie's vision and her relentless effort to make it a reality saved countless lives. But even that wasn't enough for her. She wanted to do more. She took one of the radiological cars herself and went to the front line helping the wounded with her own hands, carrying out x-ray scans. She even learned to drive and became a skilled mechanic, learning how to fix and repair everything. Between 1914 and 1918, she carried out 45 frontline missions, personally x-raying thousands of injured soldiers. Before the war, Marie had become relatively famous for her scientific work and achievements, but she had developed a reputation in the media as someone who was cold and distant. But the truth was different. She was a compassionate and kind woman. One wounded soldier afraid of the strange x-ray machine was reassured by Marie. She told him, you'll see, it's like a photograph. Later, the soldier said, she has a lovely voice, light hands, a lot of patience, 
and an immense respect for human life. She didn't stop there. Marie travelled across the battlefront, overseeing the construction of more than 200 radiological rooms in field hospitals, giving even more soldiers access to this life-saving X-ray technology. When the French government called upon citizens to support the war financially, Marie offered something extraordinary. Her two golden Nobel Prize medals. She wanted them to be melted down and sold for war funds. The French government refused, not wanting to destroy such historic artefacts. After all, Marie was the first woman to win a Nobel Prize and the only person to this day to have won two Nobel Prizes in two different scientific fields, physics and chemistry. Instead, Marie chose to invest all her prize money from winning the two Nobel Prizes into war bonds to support France. It really does seem like Marie did everything within her power to help France and the Allies win the First World War. She used her immense intellect, influence and energy to serve a cause greater than herself. And yet, when the war ended, the French military never formally recognised her work. Some officers were annoyed that a civilian, and especially a woman, had been allowed to access the front. Others were embarrassed that a scientist without military or medical training had succeeded where they had failed. As far as we know, none of the X-ray car operators were ever killed or injured in combat. However, they did still pay a price for their valiant work. Many suffered burns from prolonged exposure to X-rays. Marie knew the machines were dangerous, but there simply wasn't enough time to perfect safety protocols in the rush to help. It's highly likely that many of the women operating the machines suffered serious side effects from overexposure to the X-rays. After the war in 1919, she published a book titled Radiology in War, where she detailed procedures, safety practices and battlefield lessons she had learned. Marie was worried that her own exposure to x-rays during the war would come back to haunt her. And sadly, her fears came true. In the 1920s, she developed cataracts and chronic fatigue, symptoms of radiation overexposure. Many assumed her illness came from handling the radioactive elements radium and polonium, which she had discovered. Both emit powerful radiation and are deadly if ingested. But Marie dismissed this theory, claiming to have always taken steps to protect herself during research. She believed the real damage came from her wartime exposure to x-rays. In 1934, Marie was diagnosed with aplastic anemia, a serious blood condition where bone marrow and stem cells fail to produce enough blood cells. It proved fatal, and Marie Curie, age 66, died in July 1934. Years later, in 1995, her body was exhumed and tested. No traces of ingested radium were found, which likely confirms what she believed. Her illness was caused by the very X-ray machines she had built to save others. Marie Curie's legacy still ripples through time. She changed our world, forging a path for women in science. She was the first woman to win a Nobel Prize and still remains today the only person in history to win two Nobel Prizes in two different scientific fields. Her wartime work didn't just save lives, it sparked a medical revolution. Before 1914, X-ray machines were rare. By 1918, they had become standard. The world had woken up to just how useful X-rays could be and Marie Curie played a huge role in making that happen. Marie Curie was a brilliant woman. She used her immense intellect, tenacious spirit and kind heart to change our world for the better. She's an inspiration to us all and an example of humanity at our finest. Like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe for more like this and comment below who you'd like to see me make a video about in the future. Thanks for watching.